Welcome everyone. My name is Brian Moynihan and I'm a Global Education Solutions Manager at Lenovo. I'm excited to talk to you today about our partnership with Ithaca College to bring virtual reality into the classroom. We'll discuss the tools we used and hear from faculty, students, and staff at Ithaca College about their firsthand experiences. We'll discuss how and why to use immersive learning in the classroom and hear some real world lessons learned. Lenovo has been building products and solutions in higher education for a long time, building relationships with colleges and universities to help with the digital transformation of the entire institution, from teaching and learning to administration and security. We see virtual reality as a transformative technology that can inspire students and empower faculty to take their teaching to the next level. VR has also been shown to lead to better outcomes, such as greater engagement of students, increased focus on learning material, and better retention of information. I know the promise of immersive technology in higher education very well. Before coming to Lenovo, I spent years at UNC Chapel Hill as a student, faculty, and staff member, and led a cross-campus initiative for augmented reality and virtual reality across all disciplines, from medicine and business to language learning and anthropology. I work with faculty on pedagogical approaches to using immersive technology in the classroom, and with students in building AR VR applications, and and engage with other universities and local businesses to build a network for sharing best practices. For me, it's almost impossible to imagine the future of education where AR and VR do not play a large role. Teaching with VR also has its challenges. Over the years, Lenovo's worked with hundreds of schools to bring VR to the classroom and learn that they need more than just hardware. VR headsets are now better than ever. Screens with 4K resolution, devices that are lightweight, rugged, and easy to clean. But schools also need great content, whether that's STEM materials such as Vative that brings standards-based curriculum to middle schools and high schools, or the amazing customized content that schools build for themselves using powerful platforms like Uptail or Mozilla Hubs. To get the most out of VR, institutions also need to think about their organization and how the technology gets deployed. IT staff need an efficient way to manage a fleet of headsets so they don't have to touch every headset every time it needs an update. We designed Think Reality to solve that problem. Instructors need a simple way to keep their VR experiences in sync for their classes so that everybody's doing the same thing at the same time. We built LandSchool Air to meet that need. And all of this needs to work whether classes in the same room, across the state, or around the world. We designed our VR Classroom solution with these things in mind. Our vision for VR Classroom is that it's a complete solution for teaching with VR, one that includes the VR headsets, but also the tools to manage simultaneous classes, as well as devices and content. We also include training about how to get the most from teaching with VR. Since the solution has a lot of moving pieces, we have a dedicated phone line so institutions can get the support to answer any questions they may have about any element of the solution. I'm very happy to share the work that we've been doing with Ithaca College, which is a forward-thinking institution that has embraced immersive technology in the classroom. Lenovo partnered with Ithaca College's teacher education program to implement our VR classroom solution to train students how to teach with VR. They've seen great results. Now we'll hear from our faculty, students, and immersive media specialists at Ithaca College who made this a reality. Hi, my name is Becky Lane, and I am the Associate Director for Innovative Technologies at Ithaca College. And for the last few years, we've been running a program we're calling IC Immersive. And that is a uh, program where we're working to incorporate immersive technologies into teaching and learning here on campus. So one of the things we've been able to do with IC Immersive is take VR technology and apply it across campus. And we've had the opportunity to work with faculty to bring things like Google Maps into a, a course, an art course that was looking at outdoor murals. We've been able to bring VR technology into the physical and occupational therapy programs. We've done um, programs with pop-ups around campus where we take people who've never done VR and uh, introduce them to the technology for the first time. One of the most interesting applications we've had with IC Immersive is our work with Dr. Christine Havens Hafer of the Education Department. When the, the pandemic hit initially, we had a problem. Christine had a problem. She had a group of student teachers who needed to teach in front of their peers, but there was nobody on campus. So what we did is we mailed out headsets to every student in the class, and we met in social VR. And we had the students create lessons in VR and teach to their peers in that 3D environment. The goal is to figure out ways we can make this more user-friendly for 
not only our future teachers, but for the students they'll be teaching, and also to focus on differentiating instruction that meets the needs of all learners, whether it's at a higher ed level or in a K-12 situation. When you're teaching in VR, you have this opportunity to interact with your students in an entirely different level. Specifically with social VR, you're able to walk and explore worlds, you're able to talk with each other. Specifically, um, spatial audio and awareness helps you get that virtual kind of 3D map in your head of where people are. And when you go into breakout groups, you're able to pick up on people's conversations from across the room and maybe you hear it and it sparks your own idea. So you're able to collaborate in an entire different way that video conferencing just doesn't allow and you see people just relax when they're in it they're able to talk much more naturally and with that you just have the learning and the excitement is entirely different I believe immersive technology allows for different learning styles to be met in a classroom because you will have kinesthetic learners you'll have visual learners you'll have auditory learners and it kind of brings all those fields together into one and uh, I think that it allows for the ability for something for everybody as far as a learning style. Without having these different options, it can often be difficult for students to connect to what they're learning. And by using the immersive technology, it gives everyone an option. I can see when I teach, you know, every kid has a phone. A lot of kids might have iPads. But if I bring it, if I'm the teacher that brings in the cart of VR headsets, I could see kids lighting up for something like that. During the pandemic, this has been super helpful because a lot of students haven't been able to go on field trips. So introducing 360 video or virtual tours into the classroom is a great way to continue that education. In this pilot program, as a point specialist, we were able to work one-on-one -on -one with the student teachers to figure out what works best for them. So we offered them three paths and applications to use. So this was Mozilla Hubs, Uptail, and Viative. So Mozilla Hubs allowed students to use more of a social VR platform where you're all able to come together and experience a world in a 3D space. Uptail is a virtual tour and training platform that allowed users to walk through kind of a module set up and created by the teachers. And the last one, Viative, is a structured uh, library of lessons and classes that uh, the teachers could use and incorporate into their lesson plans. What makes a successful immersive experience in a higher education uh, situation is the ability to give our students more tools to use than they would have normally had. You break out of the mold of using textbooks or something that's more of a stationary or stagnant type of technology because it allows them to really explore their own strengths and put into their lessons their own flavor. And it opens up a whole new world for the students that they previously hadn't had any experience with. So the immersive technology gives them more freedom to learn in different ways and teach in different ways. We learned a couple things from this pilot with the education department. And I think that if you've gone to other VR sessions that you'll get takeaways about how to do things like best practices and all of that. So I'm going to just talk about some of the more personal things that we have learned and observed working with VR in this particular pilot. Um, I think the first thing, the first takeaway is to have an open mind. Uh, you really need to give people the space to explore the tech and don't make assumptions about people's level of comfort with the technology or their uh, perceived level of competence. I think that there might be some assumptions that uh, this generation is very tech savvy and we're not always finding that, especially if they're not in a tech heavy field in college. Um, and the other assumption is that I think people make with the technology is that it can only be used in a certain way. And one of the funnest things that we have seen is students who have taken this technology and applied it in ways that we hadn't thought of. And um, I think that that's something to remember is to just keep an open mind, don't make assumptions about where people are and where people want to go with the technology. As you can see, Ithaca College's approach to VR, including their experimentation with different modalities and techniques, has been impressive. Students used Viative's VR modules to create STEM lessons they could deliver in K-12 classrooms. They also used Mozilla Hubs, a free online multi-person VR chat program to create immersive spaces for teaching in VR. 
And using Uptail, they created immersive, interactive experiences, including quizzes and robust learning analytics. To manage all of their headsets, they use Think Reality, an enterprise-grade mobile device management system. Think Reality allows you to send content to headsets anywhere using a simple web-based interface, so you can add, remove, or update content or manage device settings on a number of VR headsets with just a few clicks. Landschool Air allows you to launch simultaneous VR experiences for classes. Whether class is in-person or remote, the instructor can just start the class and push out content on the headsets to everyone. That allows everyone in the class to be on the same app or video at the same time, and gives the instructor confidence that everyone's on track. Immersive technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality have a bright future in higher education. We're seeing powerful examples in every discipline, every major, every profession. And whether you're working in the humanities, social sciences, the arts, physical sciences, health sciences, or professional schools, VR can make a real difference in attaining mastery of the material. Even in the case of a single field like nursing, we're seeing VR being used for a variety of use cases, including gaining knowledge of molecular structures, learning procedures in realistic medical environments, or practicing soft skills such as communicating with care teams or explaining a difficult diagnosis to a patient. VR has an exciting future in higher education, and we're glad to be a part of it. Thanks everyone, go create something great.